Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Reimagined, a Hidden Compass YouTube series. I'm Lauren Eckert, your host, and thrilled to be joined today by friend, colleague, and badass Rhiannon Curtin. Did I say your last name right? I, we've done this before. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. I always like to double check. It's Rhiannon is a zoologist, a master's student, and a co-founder of Black Mammologist and an organizer behind Black Birders Week. She's currently pursuing her master's degree while spending lots of time outdoors and working to fight persistent stereotypes regarding who can engage in science, conservation, and outdoor recreation. Welcome, Rhiannon. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being here. So we are this month talking about the word exploration if we can be explorers in good and new ways, what that word means, the baggage it carries, whether we need new words or to redefine and retake the word exploration. Before we launch into hearing from you about your take on exploring and all it may mean for folks and for you, I'd love to hear you know, a brief summary of the kind of research you're doing now for your master's degree. Uh, <laughs> I should laugh. Um, brief I'm brief is, a, is a hard word in that context. It is. Um, I'm currently <laughs> looking at spatial ecology of white-tailed deer. Um, and my project is mostly focused on using statistical packages to look at how deer interact with hunters in time and space. Um, so it's, it's at the intersection of many different things, which you would think would maybe be interesting, but it actually is hard. <laughs> <laughs> they can be both at once. I know for a fact that living with inside a research project in a degree, the things that were at once so interesting to you when you began get really hard and old nearing the end so you're doing it right i think that is a very normal way to feel yes i am stoked to be done <laughs> with scape grad school uh yeah stoked <laughs> we will be stoked to follow all your adventures in the end and after so rihanna and you and i talk have talked about this several times before, and I'm interested in your thoughts today. So Hidden Compass as an organization is seeking to tell stories in different ways and feature different types of people than our society tends to focus on as adventurers or heroes or explorers. And this month we're sitting down with awesome adventurers and scientists and storytellers like yourself to think about the word exploration and if we as a society, as people who engage in research or adventure, travel, etc., can use the word exploration in a better way than it's been used in the past. What does exploration mean to you and where do we go from here? I feel like Maybe not the word exploration, but the word explorer is very loaded. Um, I suppose like exploration could be anyone, but I feel like specifically the term explorer has a lot of connotation, I guess, attached to it um, just because of who historically were explorers in the kind of like professional, like this is my title kind of way. Um, totally. And it's kind of interesting, I guess, to see how we still are like kind of perpetuating that. It's kind of weird. Like, I feel like, this field is like moving forward a lot um but when you look at like 
explores, it's still very like Western, we're going to explore the global South kind of like, e. <laughs> um, so I think that there's definitely a lot of room for growth. Um, and I, I guess, I don't know whether that is like redefining the word or coming up with a new word or what that, that looks like going forward. Totally. I, I hear you in every sense that Explorer in particular as an identity label is, you know, when I think of that word, the imagery associated with it is like white teams of white men visiting places where indigenous folks have lived for tens of thousands of years and sticking their flags in the ground and and claiming right. that as their own as an act of of theft and and often violence and so it's tricky in these spaces where you know in the research space or the storytelling space you may be discovering things at the interface right. you may be you know imagining new methods to understand white-tailed deer populations. You may be trying new data. You may be looking at ecosystems right. in ways from the scientific perspective, right? And I think a lot of organizations now that support exploration are trying to reward and seek explorers in that sense, but it's so hard to disentangle from its roots. Oh, I was going to say, I feel like we should just call it something else. Like, I feel like mm -hmm. historically Explorer was, you know, tied to this idea of like Terra Nullius and like discovering land that was supposedly totally. uninhabited. Actually, it was inhabited, but, um, and I think, yep. you know, like the work that we're doing as scientists we aren't exploring in the sense that like we're discovering new i mean we are discovering new things but not in the same way i feel like because like a scientist we're basing our ideas or our research on knowledge that already exists like we're building on previous knowledge totally. we're not like oh i'm discovering something completely new and novel, even though some people might claim they are. They're probably lying. It's fundamentally collaborative in nature. That's a really great point. Relative to exploration, which was seen as in many ways only for the elite and, and the elite few even at that. Mm -hmm. So when you're yeah. in these spaces, you're, it's so funny. I, I keep going to use these words that are, are all really heavy when trying to speak to, and this has happened in other interviews for this series as well, what it is we're doing at these new interfaces we may work at. I, I almost just said, you know, if you're pioneering methodologies, but pioneering is an even perhaps more um, heavily affected word than exploring in the context of colonization <laughs> and, and reimagining ourselves as scientists or researchers or storytellers who want to do all of those things in a good and centered way in, you know, recognition of colonization and those impacts. Um, right. So how do you, like, if you had to use a word to describe discovery or seeking to do things in new ways, seeking to, you know, do your science in a new way with new collaborators. Do you have any operative words that you would use in that space? I feel like I would use researcher before I would use any of those other words, I guess. Um, and then I, I suppose what I'm thinking of going to new places that I haven't been before. I tend to use the word adventurer because I feel like 
it's more of like a descriptive word of doing like oh we're going adventuring than like oh we're exploring and discovering things that no one knows about even though they do like it's 2021 we know a lot of things about a lot of things you know like so I think that kind of idea of exploring being tied to discovery is something that I shy away from because there's so much knowledge out there. Um, And I also try to think about how the things that we think that we're maybe discovering or exploring (laughs) as scientists are things that are kind of already known. Like, I know it's a buzzword right now to talk about traditional ecological knowledge, but there are many people on the planet who have known things or understood things for millennia in ways that like we in Western society didn't. But just because we didn't know it before doesn't mean it's new. Like those people have always known that. So we're just catching up. We're not actually discovering anything, Like Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, so. Yeah. Or, you know, I've seen it labeled too as a rediscovery. And I think that's problematic too. It's not, there's no buried thing being uncovered. And certainly the action right. is, should not be placed on like white or settler scientists. It's a matter right. of catching up with, of, of learning from. Um, yeah, I, I think that's an excellent point. I wonder if you could speak a little bit to what adventuring looks like for you and what it means for you as as a human on a planet where we're all trying to oh goodness um (laughs) i think adventuring has looked very different for me over the last few years um it used to be like oh i'm going away for the summer and i'm just gonna like go see somewhere new and i guess throughout the pandemic my idea of what what is adventurous has changed somewhat. Um, I haven't been anywhere like farther than five hours away from my house. (laughs) Um, So it's definitely been very different kind of experiencing stuff that's close to home and learning to appreciate that stuff Mm -hmm. for what it is you know like I didn't know this was here before and I'm still gonna go there and see it and appreciate it even though it's not like tropical like really adventurous in the sense of kind of Mm -hmm. going out there I guess and I think Instagram and TikTok and social media have kind of like created this strange perception that like to adventure or to experience something new or to see things with new eyes has to be this like big fancy endeavor that you can like take fancy photos and post it on Instagram. Like, I went to the beach the other day that's 30 minutes from my house. (laughs) And, like, I'd never been to that part of the beach before, so it was still new to me, right? Like, so I think I'm gaining a deeper appreciation for just, like, going places and seeing them for what they are and not placing expectation on it. I love that. I like a lot, you know, I often, and and through this series, I'm looking for new ways to talk about what feels like or what I may have labeled in the, in the past as exploration in the research context, right? And reframing it as an adventure is really, really lovely, I think, because 
so much of adventure as it plays out in narratives and stories we all share and love is that through the journey itself, you're reshaped. And that is such a way I feel about research and storytelling, like through getting into the thick of it in the adventure, right. we come to conclusions and new perspectives and, and answers. But I also like that as it applies to, yeah, visiting, I'm venturing to the forest outside of the, the canvas wall tent, visiting places that may not be glamorous in terms of what you can post on Instagram, which certainly is something that fuels how we think about ag- adventure and exploration in the modern era, but accepting them and enjoying them and adventuring in them for what they are is a really lovely thought that I think a lot of people have had to embrace as we've, we've stayed geographically close to home. In well, it ever ends. Yeah, I think it's actually what, what a, year and a year and a half. A year and a half? Or almost. I think oh my God, I don't know. on the 16th, it'll yeah. be a year and a half yeah. since the That's border lovely. closed, I think. I was in Pennsylvania like three days before it closed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was really, really lucky that I didn't get oh my stuck gosh. in Pennsylvania. Oh, that's correct. That would have sucked. Back to Canada. No offense to Pennsylvania. <laughs> I was almost <laughs> in New York where Rhiannon and I are both uh, on the north side of the border in Canada and we've talked a number of times about how quickly like, those changes came down and almost locked us on the south side of the border. Um, Rhiannon, do you feel like it... <laughs> I'm sure find lots of local adventures <laughs> and prepare for winter. So I guess you have that where you are too. Um, do you, do you feel like in your academic or outside of academic, you know, ventures like Black Birders Week or Black Mammalogist Week, you find space for adventure is part of the draw to those things like redefining pathways of how to exist in the world or or yeah, maybe that's a poorly constructed question, but I'm interested in how adventure, that feeling of of I revisiting think might come for me the context of your life. The outreach work like the work that we did with Black Mammalogist Week is, I guess, not so much about discovery as, like, almost responsibility. And I say that in the context of I see a lot of people talking about like, well, I have the right to do this or I have the right to do that. And it's a very like individualistic way to think about things. And, you know, like my supervisor has said to me, well, do you think you do like too many extracurriculars? Like, could you just do less? Um, And like, sure, I probably could, but I think it's important for us as kind of this generation of Black mammologists and scholars and adventurers to really like change the narrative for the people who come after us. So I think of it that way in terms of like responsibility that we have a responsibility to them to change the opportunities that they will have. Um, So I guess it's kind of in keeping with the idea of like lifting as you climb that, you know, like we have all these opportunities to do this outreach work, which kind of the pandemic has allowed. And so I think of it as like, we have to make it better for the people who come next. Because if you don't, I just don't understand the concept of being like, well, it was hard for me and I'm not going to make it better for anyone else, you know? And like, I'm a union steward. I'm a general, I should not say any swear words, but I cause trouble, good trouble. But like, you know, and- Good trouble. 
it's also a case, I guess, of like, if you're in a position to do that, you should do it. Like if you have the disposition to do it, you should do it. Because there are so many people who are like, well, I don't want to rock the boat for whatever reason. And that's completely fine. Um, But if you're not afraid to rock the boat, then you totally should. Even if it gets you in trouble sometimes. A lot. It's fine. It's whatever. I love that. Um, Where's the t-shirt? I would love a t-shirt of that. And that's, I guess, why, like part of what we did with Black Mammalogist Week was to set up the Black and Indigenous scholarship with American Society of Mammalogists Mm -hmm. is like on top of the outreach of like, look at us, like this is what we're doing. And like, this is an option for you too. We wanted to leave a tangible legacy of like, if you choose to follow this path, we want to break down barriers for you so that you don't have to overcome the same hurdles that we did. Um, So that scholarship is like a lasting thing. I mean, it's not quite lasting yet because we didn't get all the endowment money yet, but it will be. Amazing. For everyone listening, I will include show notes, the links, hyperlinks below this video uh, to link you to all of Rhiannon's incredible projects and projects in partnership with whole communities and to that scholarship. If you're either interested in it or uh, able to contribute to it, there will be links to do so. Rhiannon, I'm, I'm conscious of time. We're getting close to our deadline. Do you have anything you want to add about adventure, exploration, or responsibility, or collaboration? I'll open the floor to you here. Ooh, I don't know. I guess, like, <laughs> I know it's like that really cliched thing that people say, like, it's about the journey, it's not the destination. But overwhelmingly, I think, for me at least, that has been true. Um, and in kind of taking off or going places, I have gained so many perspectives that I never would have had. Um, Mm -hmm. And like, it's a privilege that I have been able to do that. Um, But I think that has really been important in directing kind of the path that I'm on now and where I will go in the future. And doing that outreach work has really contributed to my future path and what I'm going to be doing next. So I think it's important to think, you know, as, as researchers or grad students or whatever, who are doing science, like there's so much more to science than just sitting at your computer and writing a bunch of code in our studio. Like who is your science actually benefiting like what are you doing with it what is the impact of it and without community or recipients of your work like what is its actual value because realistically most science is never read by the public because of the racket that is scientific publishing um so I think it then becomes you know like if you are doing science that most people are not going to read, how is that going to be the most impactful? Like, how are you going to use that knowledge? How are you going to build relationships so that the knowledge that you collect will benefit others? Um, And I think that's something that has been missing from my master's research. So I'm looking forward to future projects where I can see like a direct benefit from what I'm doing other than like, oh, I'm going to write a thesis and then it's going to sit in a repository for the rest of time and no one's going to read it because it's going to be boring. Like, you know, (laughs) Um, 
So yeah, I think that's... I, I love that. I love ending on that. I will say, I, I was jumping in to correct that I'm quite sure your thesis will have contribution power and be important and not be boring. But I also understand what you're saying in that storytelling... <laughs> Storytelling opportunities can be really limited in, in the world of sort of linear academia, especially in a short degree like a master's. And so right. I, I'll i push back on your thesis being boring or not applicable, but I, I understand where you're coming from for sure. And also love, love ending on the note of a call to adventure, a call to responsibility and reciprocity in the work we do, looking for opportunities to align our science or our storytelling or whatever we may be doing with the needs of the community with uh, uh, broader collaborations. I, it's what drives me. I think it's what drives many of us. And I think it can be easy to get pulled out of in whatever career we're in, whether that's as journalists or as, you know, scientists, it, it can be really hard to continue to pursue community oriented uh, passion passion driven work. So I, I thank you for that at the end. For listeners, uh, Rhiannon and I had a wonderful multi-hour talk about her many travels, adventures, contributions, communities uh, that speak to, I think, the journey being really important. It was such a lovely journey through your what led you to where you are now. And so I'll hyperlink that as well. That was on the Witch Podcast, of course. And you can find a lot more Rhiannon in the hyperlink below anything else any uh links or, or social media uh, i mean you, you want to add that folks can find you at Rhiannon? instagram if you want i i post lots of weird things i don't you know um people are always like can we be instagram and i'm like i mean Excellent. you can but don't have any expectations um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i guess yeah like i have social media yeah i was really always low social me media expectations here having opinions they're not professional accounts um but i love interacting with people i love having people ask questions i was literally talking to someone the other day about hiking boots um <laughs> so yeah i love i love that exchange and you know people say like oh, well amazing. I was a scientist because I didn't want to work with people. And like, I was also that person. And that's still also partly true, I guess, for me. But like, my passion is animals. But I think it's so inherently important to understand that like all science is political, even if your science itself is Absolutely. not. Absolutely. Like, the decisions that get made based on it are, and everything connects back to people. And so we really, I think, as scientists, need to do better to connect and communicate with the public at large and with decision makers to actually make sure that scientifically sound decisions do get made um and we're all still learning but i think you know that's that's where we're at and i am excited for future adventuring we're not calling it exploring <laughs> anymore Never amazing <laughs> absolutely i i agree so much and i think a good reminder too that no matter what we do for work um we are all set within a political context and we all have positionality that we bring to the table that we need to assess that we need to be critical of that we need to deconstruct and and especially in the space of science like it is so so important to remember as you as you said our responsibilities I really like that I think it's something we all need to to better recognize and this is something western science is catching up to indigenous sciences in in, in recognizing our responsibilities mm -hmm. to our communities and to, to those yet to come. So a wonderful note to end on. Thank you so much, Rhiannon. Uh, join us next episode, everyone, for more unpacking of these words like exploration and discovery and reimagining of new ways forward with better words. Amazing. For Thank sure. you. Thanks so much for having me.